All right, Android fans, let's cut to the chase. These Android 16 betas and the previews, well, there's lots of little tweaks, but where's the wow? Here's a problem. I think thanks to leaks or proposed functions that we've seen online, I think we're all left a little bit feeling frustrated. But fear not, in this video, we're gonna dive into what we'd consider the missing Android 16 functions, the visual overhauls, the usability upgrades, and the stuff that could be game-changing and is expected later online. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. You didn't expect me to skip asking you to subscribe to this video, did you? Well, do it, it really helps me out. I want you to, and in fact, I need you to. It gives me extra energy, cheers. You're a legend. As it stands, Android 16, at least this initial release, because there is going to be two releases, if you didn't already know that, you probably should know that by now, there is going to be some changes in how Google is pushing these updates. Effectively, some of the visual upgrades and overhauls that are expected and have leaked already and maybe are going to refine and actually overhaul the user interface are not actually arriving with this initial release. In fact, all of these evolutions on material design language are going to come later down the line. So without any further ado, let's just get into these. I think naturally one of the most significant visual changes though is the revamped notification panel. There's been evidence of this for a little while. Google is potentially going to give this a complete overhaul with a more prominent display of the time at the top designed to match the lock screen's clock style. There's a dedicated bar being added for the clear all notification settings and notification history buttons. This is realistically a big departure from the current design, which is pretty, I'd say pretty concrete in the way that it works. It's not necessarily the most user friendly in some respects, but this effectively, we're gonna see extra changes to this section as well, including fully opaque backgrounds for certain notifications if you don't wanna adjust that. These changes really do promise a cleaner and more organized way to manage your alerts, but as it stands, none of these are available yet in the beta release. And it's one of the biggest disappointments. We keep seeing people saying, where are these features? Well, yeah, they're not ready just yet. Hopefully they're gonna be ready later down the line. Maybe Android 16 QPR1 or QPR2 is where we're gonna see these. So the visual overhauls are also extending to the volume controls. They're getting a fresh coat of paint, not necessarily a massive UI change, but the volume slider itself is getting just better alignment with the latest material you design standards. There's going to be a vertical bar to indicate the slider's position, at least the volume position, with a dark color on one side and a blank space on the other, along with a small dot at the end to represent the highest volume level or the highest value. I think it's a subtle but welcome change that really does enhance the overall aesthetic. It makes it easy to see what the volume is at a glance. Google's also tweeting things like the status bar icons potentially later down the line. The Wi-Fi signal strength icon will now potentially display three segments instead of five. Battery icon visuals are also being refined as well. So when the battery is sufficient and it's not charging itself, the battery color is gonna be a solid white. When it's low, it'll turn red. And when charging, it'll be a vivid green. The battery level percentage is also set to potentially become bolder and the icon is gonna be flipped. These changes definitely provide cleaner or at least more intuitive information at a glance. But again, like all of these things, these are technical leaks of this, so it's not sure or we're not sure what it will look like when it actually does arrive, because sometimes it can be something that is work in progress. And remember back in the day when Android let you do things like change the shape of your app icons, I think it was Android 11 that this was the last time you could do this. Well, this feature is supposedly gonna be making a comeback with Android 16, or at least a version of Android 16. Google is set to reintroduce the ability to customize icon shapes for your applications, at least those on your home screen. It's not sure if it's gonna to apply to the app drawer, but this naturally was removed in Android 12. There's also a possibility that Google is gonna add shapes to the lock screen. So you'll get things that are similar to other Android skins out there, like on One UI, for instance, with the options to think, show like weather effects, all that kind of stuff. This re-edition, at least of certain functions will allow for a more personalized and visually appealing home screen. Something that I do think is something we've lost in the last few years on Pixel with, with the introduction of dynamic color and material U effectively doing all that for us without much real input. Those are some of the visual changes or at least some of the leaked visual changes that are gonna come. I think they're very welcome. I'm looking forward to seeing them. But Android 16, like any version of Android is also focusing on some enhanced usability and functionality to, just to make that OS a little bit more efficient and hopefully user-friendly down the line, and especially with the Pixel 10, at least in the not too distant future. This is where we hope to see more changes and improvements because I think this is where Android really helps with unique options and functionality that other OESs more or less lack. Uh, accompanying the notification panel though, or at least the notification panel redesign, there's gonna be some potentially new swipe gestures here. So a swipe from the top left will show notifications 
while a swipe from the top right will display quick settings. This split setting is nothing new. We've seen it across Android. We've seen One UI implement it, Oxygen OS 15 and Color OS. While there's no gestures to switch between the two, like a left and right swipe, there are buttons on the top to act as shortcuts. This gesture, or at least gesture-based navigation for the quick settings panel, should streamline how you access and manage your notifications and those settings. But again, I can understand this being a little bit of a frustration for some people because they like that unified settings. We're hoping Google will offer that as well. We've seen AI bleed into lots of areas of mobile OSs over the last couple of years, but Android 16 is also supposedly going to introduce a summarized notification option. So basically, you'll have the ability to turn off summaries for individual applications. This will bundle them together and effectively give you a concise summary of those notifications, the information around them, a little bit like what is available on iOS. So in practice, it feels like it's lifted straight out of it. So you can just grasp the important information without having to open each app itself. It's worth noting that Google's version will apparently only work for conversation notifications, which could address some of the other issues faced by similar features on the iPhone and other platforms out there. Multitasking on Android 16 is also supposedly going to get another significant upgrade, especially for tablets. Android 16 is potentially going to bring support for up to three applications at once in split screen mode on larger displays. Hopefully with this is on foldables, but we're not sure at this stage. This is a feature that many Android manufacturers have already sort of implemented in their custom skins and Google is finally bringing it to the core Android experience. This enhanced multitasking will naturally boost productivity for people who want to run applications at the same time, especially on those devices with larger screens like the Pixel tablet, although 11 inches is not a massive screen by any tablet standards. Another thing I'm really excited for is a potential of widgets back on your lock screen in Android 16. So in QPR 1, which has been confirmed publicly, it's going to bring lock screen widgets to phones following their launch on the Pixel tablet. If you haven't seen these already, it's effectively just qu quick information. They're not exactly the most, well, they are feature rich, but they're not the most functional in that respect. These widgets will approximately give you four cells by three cells tall. So it's the recommendations for these will follow dynamic color and resizing options based upon your screen size. While OEMs can't necessarily customize their lock screen widget UI, at least in this initial release, the feature will offer quick access to important information and controls that you may, may want to use and may need without actually unlocking your device. So you just swipe right from your home screen, at least on the tablet, and that's where they are found. So hopefully it works in the exact same way on phones as well. Another feature that we're actually looking forward to is a new quick settings tile called Video Chat. This basically strings were found for this in Android 16 Beta 4, the most recent public release. This suggests that Android is going to offer some video chat effects such as background blur, portrait lighting, portrait touch up and studio style mic noise suppression for your video calling options. It doesn't necessarily actually tell us what applications are working, but these visual calling enhancements will definitely give you more control over your appearance and audio quality when you're using applications that do video calling, Google Duo, that kind of thing, Google Meet, and maybe even hopefully WhatsApp and other options that people will use necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, video calling. And Android 16 is also supposedly going to improve external display management, making it more desktop-like. Not sure how this is going to work in practice, but Google is supposedly addressing issues with mouse and cursor transitions, at least with this between displays and adding a toggle to switch between mirroring and extending the built-in display, something that will really help multitasking. These enhancements are going to make it easier to use Android devices with external monitors, especially USB-C monitors, which there are lots of now on the market, potentially just giving you that extra versatility that you wouldn't necessarily have with it out of the box. Whether it's going to be available in the same way of like DeX on Samsung phones, we're not sure at this stage, but yeah, it's another feature that we would really like to see. We're hoping to see that develop as well as it has been spotted multiple times already. There are some other random usability features that we're expecting in Android 16 that are not available in the current betas and are not going to be, well, at least not as far as we're aware, going to be available in this first release of the OS. There's features like double tap or wake to sleep the display, something that's been on Android phones from other OEMs for a long time now. There's going to be fingerprint scanning available when your screen is off and that's also not yet available, but there are other important additions here in Android 16 that I think we really do want to see later down the line. But let's look ahead a little bit because it is shaping up to be, at least not initially, later down the line it's going to be a significant update. I'm, I'm almost convinced now that they're saving a lot of this for the Pixel 10 launch. There's going to be a lot more focus on visual refinement and usability enhancements that have been missing for a few years because we haven't really seen much for maybe four years now. From the redesigned volume slider to that introduction of lock screen widgets or reintroduction of those and just improve multitasking there's a, there's a lot to look forward to but not necessarily right away however it's important to remember that the first big ota after android 16 is going to be qpr1 which 
I think if we look at the timeline, it's expected around September 2025. So it's a little while away. There looks to be a bigger overhaul once these features are available. I do think with the Pixel 10 series launching around August, they could arrive with many of these features in tow, maybe slightly timed exclusive. So it might not be as long as a wait until September, especially if you're planning on getting a new device. The direction is clear though from what we can see from right away. Android is evolve evolving to be just even more user-friendly and versatile, especially with more form factors, making it available, that is, on more form factors. I, I wanna ask you though what you're most excited about. I know leaks are one of those things that we, we tell you to just temper your expectations for, and I do think software leaks are one of those where they don't necessarily always come to fruition. They can be canned at any time. It's just how it goes with software. Sometimes it doesn't work out how it's supposed to. It takes years to develop, and sometimes there just isn't enough interest from you, the user out there, me sat here as well, talking about Android, someone who uses it day to day. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully this has given you an idea of what not to expect for Android 16. Yes, a strange way to say it. And I will catch you in the next one.